This is Trappa. This is a uh, normal corn snake, a wild-faced corn snake that we have here in our, um, our part of the country. They're not as common as they used to be, but um, there's debate with the name as to where corn snake comes from. Some people say it's because they, farmers would find them in the corn cribs eating the rats. Some of uh, the debate is they have this really great pattern on their bellies, kind of a checkerboard pattern, and some people say that's where it came from. I don't, I don't see a corn cob there, and I'm guessing it was the Indian corn that they, they believed it was. I still I, I tend to hold true what they found in the corn cribs and eat the mice. They, uh, they commonly eat birds, uh, small birds, mice, amphibians, anything that they can uh, they can take down. And you see these guys in the pet trade all over. Any reptile show, any pet store is going to have corn snakes. And they come in a wide variety of colors, beautiful, uh, beautiful morphs now. Uh, I have one at home called Coral. Uh, coral snow corn that's almost solid white with orange or uh, yellow cheeks. It's just a beautiful snake. They're very docile. This is a wild call. I've had her in captivity since July of last year. Hardly handle her, and you can see how docile they are. They tame down very well, and um, they make great pets for anyone as far as if you have smaller children. They don't get big. They max out at about five and a half feet. And they stay thin. So while that if five and a half feet with some species of snake can be bulkier, with these guys they stay real thin. You can keep them in a 55 gallon tank. Um, they will they eat frozen thawed mice very easy. So you don't even need. I don't recommend feeding anything the live if you can avoid it. Simply because you increase your risk of bite and you can get infections from that. But they're really great pets. Um, I haven't seen any in the wild since I was about 10 years old. And one thing I've noticed as I've been going through biology ranks is that our fire ant populations and our raccoon populations seem to be increasing drastically. So what I'm wondering, I would love to see somebody do some studies on this, is if fire ants are getting into nests or pre you know, predating on the hatchlings. Um, and as far as the, the raccoons and stuff, that too, that very much could be affecting it, but um, I haven't found any studies on it, so if anybody's interested in that, that would be, I think, a great uh, project to look into. Um, but they they make great little pets. Um, again, you can find them in every color morph you can imagine, from bright yellow, bright solid red, um, just beautiful patterns. Um, the normal corn snake pattern is this section right here. But they have what's called jungle morphs, where they start taking them and breeding striping down the side. And as a wild type, she has some of that striping. So she would have been, when people started initially breeding them, she would have been something that somebody would have seen in the wild and gone, oh God, and then tried to breed out. But uh, they, are, they are fun little snakes. I really recommend them as far as pets, because as far as them and ball pythons, they are about the most docile snake I've ever come across. And the last little guy I have for his first snakes goes, this is a baby eastern hog nose. And these are very common around here, a little bit more north than uh, down here in uh, Mobile. You may hear them called a puff adder. And these little guys, when they get upset, they'll throw out a little hood like a cobra. They get about three feet long as adults. And they'll hiss, they'll swell up with air, they'll puff out. And then if that fails to scare you off or scare, scare the predator off, they will produce a foul-smelling, horrible musk, flip over on their back and pretend to be dead. And everybody thinks they're dead. They're, they're so convincing that they will draw flies. And if you flip them back over, they will flip themselves back over and pretend to be dead again. And so whatever it is that's scaring them, yeah, there you go. Um, Whatever's scaring them finally wanders off, and then they'll flip themselves back. Um, they'll flip themselves back, and they'll go on about their business. Um, I do not ever. This is an Eastern hog and snake. I made a mistake in getting this as a pet, and here's why. They are our most exclusive toad eaters. They, in the wild, very seldom eat anything other than species of toad. And this is, it, it's almost impossible to get them to switch over to eating frozen thawed or even live mice in captivity. I have to go out and catch tadpoles for this little guy so that he can eat. 
because I have a responsibility as a pet owner to make sure that he's at least eating. Had I to do it over again, I would never get one of these guys. There's one that's from the western part that's called a western hognose snake. They commonly eat mice. Much better pet. <laughs> Much less time involved with having to go out in streams in January on this you know, rare 70 degree day to catch tadpoles. As he grows up, I'm going to keep trying to get him switched over, but there's no guarantee that'll ever happen. And that's why they make absolute bull pets. Um, they're great for demonstrating uh, a native species. They're accidentally killed by many people because they think they're poisonous. They have a little tiny upturned nose, and it's almost a triangular snout, and then when they puff and they hiss and they look scary, people think they're poisonous, and they mistake them for a cotton mouth or a copperhead. Totally harmless. Uh, again, they will do everything to avoid conflict. They will do. They will faint. They will pass out. They will stink. They they even go as far as they do strike at you. It's a closed mouth strike. Where uh, even a corn snake, he is very upset. He will do an open mouth strike and, and tag you with the tiny teeth. These guys will do closed mouth strikes. They will never. I mean, almost never bite you. But they get killed all the time by accident because people don't realize that they're completely harmless. But again, it's not one that I would recommend, even though, I mean, that, that's cheap for a baby snake. Even if you don't have snakes, you like, that's cheap. Um, I still don't recommend them for pets simply because of the dietary needs for them. Even though they stay smaller than corn snakes, they, they max out to, again, three and a half feet, about like a ball python. But, um, they just simply have such a dietary requirement, it almost makes it impossible to care for them in a way that you can ensure their best quality of health. Um, the last thing that we have, the cutie. This is Missouri. Missouri is a Russian uh, tortoise. They're native to the Pakistan and Russian steppes over in, um, in Asia. She's a rescue. We got her from St. Louis, Missouri last year. Um, she was not well cared for. She had metabolic bath disease, so her nose is overgrown, her nails are overgrown, and her shell is collapsed down something. As far as a pet horse goes, you cannot go wrong with these guys. They're a lot of fun, they're very personable, and they learn their, their owners, and they will come running up to, um, to be fed. She lives loose in our apartment. I don't, I, she's a wild caught. Um, they still routinely capture these guys in the wild and ship them over here in mass quantities. They're, they're just now starting to captive breed. So I would encourage anybody who's thinking about getting one to purchase a captive bred pet because it's simply, it's, 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 not as, it's not humane to be taking them out of the wild as they're doing. And you also, you're taking wild populations away that as Alex was discussing about conservation, every one you're taking out of its habitat is the one that would be breeding, it would be reproducing its native habitat. So the reason I don't have her in a cage is I figure if she's used to having an acre to wander around, I can give her an apartment. I soak her in a kitty litter pan every other day. She goes to the bathroom in the water, I flush down the toilet, and she wanders about. When she wants to eat, she comes up to be fed. Um, so she's, she has a, she's a lot of fun. Um, I don't recommend doing it if you have a dog or a cat that would think it's a, it's a tasty little snack. Um, they can live in 55 to 75 gallon aquarium. 55, of course, would be much more ideal. Um, she is full grown. This is, a, is a, an example of a, a little bit actually larger female than you would typically get simply because with her shell flattened down from her deformation. Um, she, they typically have a little bit more around the shelf. She's a little bit more of a, a, a larger scale on them. They, uh, they eat vegetables. They don't eat any meat, so you can feed them um, the spring green mixes with calcium dust and vitamin dust on them, ground up uh, various vegetables, carrots, squash, things like that. And they make ideal little pets. Um, they're not aggressive at all. They very, very, very seldom bite. You almost can't get them to bite. So it's not a turtle that you really need to worry about with children. Um.